You know, I am, and, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to dial in uh, on my audio because I'm, I'm hearing a lot of um, kind of delays. So I'm going to attempt to do that right now. Okay. Forgive me. I'm so sorry, folks. Fine. Could be us. Could be our internet. We We're having, having some on? issues. I found out this morning, but you'll work on it. But it is going to end out. Welcome to Zoom. Enter your meeting ID followed by pound. Mind getting him. Technology. Enter your participant ID. Are in the meeting now. There are two participants in the meeting. Wait, can you hear me now? Yeah. That's yeah. wonderful. I'm there. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. There's no delay or anything this time. So I apologize. Thank you so much. And the right. treasurer and the team guests, thank you so much for having us. So appreciate that. Thank you. Great. Great. We'll get started again. Treasurer Lowry had a previous commitment. He wanted to be here. So I'm filling in and we have capable staff here with Fran and Chris aware of it. We will move forward. I'd like to uh, call the meeting to order and uh, welcome everyone. And I think do we? I think we passed introductions. Let's yeah, I think that. we've already we we well. Christy, Christy, do you want to introduce or Jose, introduce Jose? Yeah, I know we were talking about Jose earlier. He he has all the knowledge in our company on on the Eagle plan. He is the guy, and he spends all of his time working with the eighteen states and make up the alliance. So that is one hundred percent of his duty. He's completely committed to doing that, Jose. Has been with us what, what are you, 12, 13 years at this point? I mean, I, I lose track of I mean, you know, you, you've aged a lot in the last uh, year. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, I hit my 15 year anniversary in October this past year. So yes. uh, we're, we're getting to 16, you know. That's awesome. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. And he does an absolutely yeah. fantastic job. Fantastic job. Couldn't seem enough. Thanks, David. Appreciate and that. Christy, Christy, can you remind us what? Division, what department with DHS do you serve? I am. Oh, sorry. She's a mom. She's tough. She got a call for kids. Last minute. I'm sorry. We, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, Christy. <laughs> Sorry, I have a dog that won't be quiet. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's, he was being awfully loud. Um, I work with the Division of Medical Services now. Um, originally when I started um, on the board, I worked with the Division of County Operations as a program administrator, but I'm with the Division of Medical Services now. Um, I'm a business operations manager. I'm actually the D, uh, DMS waiver compliance manager. Great. Um, okay. Well, we well, will go ahead and get any started. more introductions. That, I think we're good. Okay. Did y'all have a chance to review the minutes? Somebody didn't review the minutes. A moment. Hey, Christy, you have the packet, right? That was yes. Okay. And I did review them, and I didn't have any comments. Okay. We have a motion to accept the minutes. I make a motion to accept. I'll second. I second. Okay, you'll second. Thank you. Okay, we have a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Aye. I'll call that a majority. That passes out. Oh, any no's? All right. We approve the minutes. Next, we're going to go into our. Uh, Business section, I'm gonna let Fran Jansen uh, guide us through this part. So just have a, a few updates. Um, Chris and I uh, presented to a group called Rainbow of Challenges. 
in January. I don't know if you either of you are familiar with them. Um, they're in Southwest Arkansas. Well, I believe they're based in Hope, but they serve the Southwest Arkansas region and uh, provide services for people with developmental and intellectual delays. And they were primarily interested. In fact, I know, I believe Jose was on that, that uh, meeting with us. And they were primarily interested in understanding how to implement the rep payee model uh, or, or set up ABLE accounts with using from a rep payee perspective. So that was, that was a good meeting. Um, then we will again be hosting or helping put on or hosting a table at the uh, DDPA, the Developmental Disability Providers Association Conference in La Rock, April 18th through the 20th. Um, I think Chris, you can attest to the fact that we've made some really, really good contacts from that event. I mean, there, there are people, other exhibitors that are interested in you know, you've been able to set up meetings after the conference with them, so. Yeah, we actually have cases where people that are attending will attest and provide testimonials on the ABLE account whenever somebody new to them is nearby our table. That's correct. Is that at the uh, Holiday Holiday Inn? Yeah, Airport? Oh, Bankhead, yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you all, uh, Nathan, do you all participate in that at all? I, I don't believe so. I think I've seen services for the blind there. Yeah. I don't, I don't think, certainly none of, none of my department okay. uh, is. Now, if uh, regular field services, maybe they, they are. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's a pretty good group. How many folks do they typically have? Uh, 300, really? Yeah, and there are 90, the court, they, they say they have about 90 agencies participating. Okay. Judy, Judy Ratchet. I believe so, yes. Her husband stayed around. Uh, Annie. Oh, uh, Hope. Julie Mayberry. Uh, no. From Hope. Oh, okay. I thought you said But that, they're, Julie they're in Hope, Prescott, Texas, Canada. Now you're talking. Uh, the Rainbow. You're talking okay. Rainbow of Challenges. I'm talking about DDPA. You're still. That's okay. That's okay. I'm trying listening. I thought I was listening. They and may it, be <laughs> They may be part of you. Um, but I'm interested. Again, to this group, go ahead. So they, they're about, um, I think, like 90 different agencies that make it up. And they put on an annual conference okay. in April. And uh, Pete, like Chris said, about you know, a couple hundred people come. Yeah. So, and they, they have, so we participate more in the exhibitor part, but they yeah. have breakout conferences. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Not part of it, we probably should. Yeah, they did a lot of training and awareness. Yeah. yeah, they have a whole website, so you can find them mm -hmm. easily. Um, then the last thing I was just going to mention, we, like last month, somebody reached out to us about uh, presenting in September. Um, it's an organization, an autism organization called the Tyler Danaway Foundation, and um, it is a an organization that helps support caregivers and parents of children with autism. And I believe she said this, and it's in Benton, and this will be their second conference. Um, and it's like a Saturday morning in September. So we uh, absolutely, you know, especially since that's probably our number one, uh, the, the, the people who have ABLE accounts, in autism, like the number one. Well, that's one of the leaders. She did yeah. one of the leaders in fact, uh, for, for this plan. But she had heard about us and about Abel from somebody else that we presented the program to. So, I mean, it's just, it's all relationship uh, connections. So those are just some of the, the highlights. Um, any questions? All right, so I'll move on. Uh, so there is a little bit of housekeeping that we need to do with the new treasurer coming in and replacing Treasurer Milligan. We need to officially approve adding Treasurer Lowry, um, giving him authorization to sign checks um, and 
So in order to do that, the, um, the committee has to officially approve him and, and give him that authorization. So he, and once this happens, he and Joe will be the two signatories uh, or signers for any ABLE accounts, any ABLE checks that need to be cut. So could I ask for approval or a motion to approve Treasurer Lowry as a signer? I make a motion that we approve Treasurer Lowry as a signer. I second. Thank you. Okay, and at this then, Dave, I'll hand it over to you to give us an update mm -hmm. on the ABLE plan. Putting that back up, Chris, I'm trying. I'm just going to the first the asset slide. You know. Now we start out by saying this looks a lot different than the 529 slide of the that really shows the same information. Uh, able assets are concerned with the investment. We'll show the investments a little bit, but right now, you know, it's you just don't see the craziness that's happened uh, over the last year and a half that uh, that you've seen with the 59 plan. And we we basically ended January with a with 4.1, almost 4.2 million. So the asset, you know, the asset models are different, right? It's definitely, uh, it, it's it's uh, still a young plan. Uh, if you if you go to the next page, you can see the assets by investment options. Uh, the the checking option and the conservative option are the top two ways that people put their money hold their money in the plan and and you know we call this a savings account but at the end of the day a lot of the, a lot of the assets are in the checking option and those withdrawals out of the checking option are made with a debit card so it's really almost a spending account in a way right mm -hmm. meeting your life needs uh, through your ATM card uh, if you're yeah. over, I mean, yeah. and, and David yes. Well, Pardon me, so sorry, David. If we could go back to the prior slide too. I, I think one one key piece here too, uh, Arkansas was an early adopter of the National Able Alliance, right? When we look at uh, right now, they, they consist of 18 members. Um, Arkansas and Alaska actually were the first two plans that launched of the Alliance back in December, uh, December 15th of 2016, if, if we could go back uh, some time. So uh, you're looking at a plan that really started from the ground uh, from the ground uh, and grew to, let's say, uh, north of 4 million. Uh, one interesting data element here, and, and it's a good comparison because obviously we have what the percentage of assets are uh, are invested in based on uh, the alliance. And then uh, the second to the last column is the percentage of total assets uh, just for the Arkansas ABLE plan. I think one uh, piece of data that, that kind of speaks well of, of, of information in regards to Arkansas and Arkansas ABLE participants is clearly, yes, there's definitely some transactional value that they see in the Arkansas ABLE plan. Uh, but here it also shows, you know, in comparison to, at, let's say at the Alliance, which 16% of total assets are in the conservative act, uh, option, uh, you find 44% of Arkansas uh, ABLE savers are um, in the conservative option. Which then tells me, you know, just in a snapshot anecdotally, that you're looking at really a really nice mixture of investors and let's say transactors uh, in the Arkansas ABLE plan. Maybe they're not quite as comfortable to get into the more, let's say, aggressive type of options, but you have folks that are interested in saving, let's say, longer term, you know, and in addition to that, using it for transactional. Um, value as well. So I really like this slide because it just highlights the type of able saver that we currently have uh, in the state of Arkansas. So sorry, David. No, no, please, please. Appreciate your, uh, yeah. your input. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. well, let's, uh, let's go to the contributions page. Uh, I just wanted to, to point out here that uh, the, the month of January and last December were both very, very much standout months for uh, inflows coming into the plan. So uh, we look to see that uh, that trend continue. Yeah. Um, was the April was the April one from last year? That that was when that was a stimulus. Stim yeah. Stimulus, yeah. stimulus. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's right. Spot on, Fred. Yeah. Uh, so look at contributions uh, by type. Number one, number two, uh, are opposite ends of the spectrum. One's electronic, one's check. 
uh, we still see quite a bit of checks coming into the plan, but we also see, I mean, almost half the transactions via contribution, by contributions are done electronically. That's right. In fact, you know, this is a, also an early indication or, or not an early indication, but it, it paints a picture of what the ABLE saver looks like, right? And I think we could probably even draw some comparison from the 529. 5T9, I feel like are more paper-based actually than our typical ABLE savers. A lot of our ABLE savers, although maybe they'll enroll via paper, maybe they'll receive uh, paper uh, statements and tax forms. Uh, generally speaking, I would say that they're very, very web savvy, right? Um, they, use, they use their laptops, they use their iPads, their, I, their, their smartphones. Uh, and again, this is just an indication that, yes, we'll, we'll certainly support paper, we'll continue to support paper, but it's clear that, hey, listen, they're savvy. They know how to use uh, electronic uh, transmission and adding bank instructions. So that's always a promising data element there to say that 44% of assets were through an electronic submission. You know, I love this. Yeah, yeah. So we want to go over the distribution. Uh, the only thing I'm pointing out is, and Jose, I don't know if you have any insight on if you're seeing this throughout the alliance, but January was a big distribution month, substantially higher than what we saw in, in uh, January of 2022. Um, is there any any insight that you have on what's what might be driving uh, this particular bump in distributions? Yeah, this is completely speculation from my perspective, but I think what happens too is, um, and maybe it's around asset limitation and spending. I, I feel like, you know, once you carry into the new year, there's probably a little bit more freedom when you are receiving some sort of federal benefit, um, you know, because again, there's a concern sometimes like, hey, we got to stay under that $2,000 asset limitation. We have to be uh, be slightly worried about, um, you know, what's considered income. Um, so I feel like sometimes what we'll see is is a slight increase in activity towards the beginning and the end of the year. But again, that's that's com complete speculation on my part, David. Yeah. Hey, Jose, I have a question on this. Um, sure. So back in 18, when we launched, we immediately started a relationship with DHS. Uh, just what was it, a month or so ago, they moved all of their portfolios from moderate to conservative. There's no chance that That's that is gonna be picked up in the distributions, correct? It, it, it shouldn't be distributions or it deficit. Which, what you're talking about are, are transfers within the plan. Okay. It's totally, totally different than a, okay. than a, than a distribution. We would, it would be a pretty bad flaw to mix those two up. It just doesn't pick that up. Uh, so my, my sense is that these are true distributions. Okay. Awesome. Means they're being used. Yeah. Yeah. Um, over to the next slide, uh, distribution by type. Again, I just wanted to point out that, you know, this is a savings account, but it's also a spending account. And uh, you see the usage 63% of distribution dollars uh, uh, year to date are through an ATM card, right? People buying goods and services and they're using their ATM card. Any questions there? And then distribution by age group. Um, I mean, there's nothing. I mean, the fact that uh, this chart looks very similar uh, every time we present it, with 35 to 37 being uh, the majority group of uh, of, of uh, folks taking distributions. Any other insight that uh, that you bring uh, that you could add to this slide, Jose? David, this is pretty consistent across the board. Where it's it's difficult for us to project or even um, deduce. You know when dispersals are happening. You know the our our our, our kin in, in five to nine. It's easy. We we almost know <laughs> at one point there is a horizon. Someone's ready to go to college or go to secondary school or, or some sort of technical school. So we're thinking eighteen years from now for sure. That's when we'll start to see withdrawals out. Um, you know what what what's uh, what this tells me really is again, uh, able savers, Arkansas able savers. You know we really impacting everybody within that age gamut from zero to let's say 66 and plus, right? So uh, what you're seeing is number one, folks who are eligible to be able to enroll into an account um, because their onset of disability happens 26 or prior, but then they're also utilizing it uh, across the board and, and obviously uh, making contributions. Uh, but this is one of those situations where it's like, hey, listen, it's, it's difficult to really determine you know, when that time horizon or savings horizon 
uh, will finally hit, right? So that's why we've always kind of approached it with target risk options, depending on your sensitivity to risk. And then also, you know, adding as part of that investment option, you know, the, the, the fifth third checking option, which then allows them to easily access their funds uh, when, when needed. Um, but yeah, this is, what well, I will say though, and once again, this is only my perspective, my anecdote, and my opinion. Um, but, you know, what, what, what we're starting to see just from my observations, and even you saw it in the contributions chart, you know, is this evolving into a, you know, yes, it is an investment, it is a savings tool, but is this evolving, evolving into a tool that's almost becoming a necessity versus an option? Not to say that we would ever force this upon anyone, but it's almost like saying, hey, listen, it seems like this is now something viable that I can use, not just as a miner, but eventually as I continue on with my life, right? So, you know, it's not necessarily an 18-year window or a 22-year window that we're looking at, let's say, on the 529 side. Um, but is this something that will essentially you enroll as soon as, let's say, you know, we know on the onset of disability, and then it's something you just carry on for the rest of your life? Um, you know, so that, that's uh, to be determined. But I think early numbers and data show that, yeah, this is potentially something that becomes a necessity and not necessarily an option, you know, and from, a, from an Arkansas Able Savers viewpoint. Very good. Go to the next slide, uh, Chris. The new accounts by month. Uh, December was a great month. We basically doubled the, uh, the previous year. And, uh, and we had a nice increase in, in January of this year. Uh, so we're hoping that trend continues. And, and as, as Jose had mentioned earlier, I mean, a lot of this activity at the enrollment is done online. We still get some paper, uh, but the, the, uh, the ability for some of these folks to, uh, almost half of them, to enroll online is definitely noted. And then the next slide, uh, accounts by disability type. You, you were saying earlier, and Chris, you validated that the, uh, you know, the number one disability that people are talking about are is the development disorders, which includes autism. So, any questions on that? And then uh, accounts by eligibility and custodial type uh, across the board. I mean, we're seeing, um, you know, the, the the way the open accounts are broken out. I I, I didn't want to make a note at the bottom that uh, the uh, and I don't know obviously how this aligns with other plans in the alliance, but it's almost evenly split split between the account owner, self being the the uh, the account owner or the person who opened up the account, the parent guardian, or an authorized individual. Now you guys have you guys have a unique position here with your uh, relationship with ECFS that they played a really big role in this. So. I, uh, in, in a way, I'm, I'm almost not surprised that um, that this would be even higher number here in Arkansas. Any questions on that? And then account closures. Um, really, the uh, I, I, there's nothing here that really stands out. We're seeing that I mean January is very similar to previous Januarys. December was very similar to the previous year. Uh, November stood out a little bit, but for the most part, the trends are are, are rather tight across the each month. Uh, and you hit the bottom, the reason why the, uh, the closure occurred for, uh, for the current quarter. And then the last slide is enrollments out of here about the plan. Again, DCFS seems to be playing a major role here because uh, the number one uh, the number one listing for 2022 calendar year was an organization. So. Uh, they, they certainly seem to be getting the word out about, about the plan. Any questions? Right. I, I did have a question. Sorry, I'm no, still no. nails on this, but I'm just curious back on your slides, you mentioned your presentation about the disability type mm -hmm. and marketing. How, how help me on this? Uh, when you open new accounts, I mean, how, how do you? How do you track where that came from? Is that referral? Is that through an event or through a, well, a 501c3 or through rehab services or the DHS? How do you know where yeah. where that new account opened through who? Well, it's easy with ECFS because they are actually listed on the account. Um, but uh, but in other ways, I mean, it, it can be challenging mm -hmm. to figure out where you know how to how that person 
heard about the plan. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the data at the very end is, a, is from a little bit certainly at the end of the enrollment process where people get to say, hey, this is how I heard about the plan. That's self-reporting and not everybody fills it out. And so people you know, misremember like, or yeah, yeah. they, don't, they yeah. just choose logic because they don't remember how they can. And we see the same, we, we asked the same survey on the 529 plan. People, you know, sometimes don't recall how they heard about it. And it's difficult. It takes a, when we know on the 529 side, it takes quite a few um, um, hits. Hits, uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. Hits to the account, to the potential account on for them to ever, ever act. We assume the same applies here as well. And we've also discussed in the past this organization line on how they heard about us. You know, that doesn't just capture DCFS spreading the word. Somebody may also check that box that they saw near Fran or somebody from rehab services out there. Or or like the plan. Arkansas, um, oh, the AROC. Um, oh, Autism yeah. Resource Camp Awareness. Yeah. I'm just asking from my previous history and experience, especially that you know, a lot of this was a, a lot of times it's the parent advocacy groups mm -hmm. or through organizations that have a subgroups of that or or, or the other parents telling other parents or individuals who are trying to be more self-reliant independent yeah. that other individuals in their support groups tell them share this information with them yeah and, and jose correct me if i'm wrong here but we seem to see a lot of advocacy groups really getting the message out about able i mean they're the ones who who got into legislation right and and they're the one that really really you know are spreading the gospel mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree, David, right, in collaboration with a lot of our state partners, such as such as Fran and, and Chris, um, you know, generally speaking, able savers or, or let's say folks who receive federal benefits, um, you know, have had to jump through legal loopholes or or have been told not to save. So it's an exercise of of reeducating and really you know, departments of human services, uh, disability organizations, those are trusted partners, right? That they are the ones they want to go to and be like, hey, is, is ABLE real? You know, am I going to lose a benefit? So naturally their inclination is like, uh, again, always go to their organization or, or um, 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 some sort of family uh, or, or group home. Uh, and in this case, again, I know Fran and, and Chris have been active participants since the get since 2016. So. Uh, naturally, I, I have a feeling they've become now also trusted partners or, or go-to folks uh, to solicit some sort of information, you know? Yeah. 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 You can imagine how, you know, or well, you were involved. I mean, you were involved early on in like conversations with people who have been told all their life that you're going to have your SSN or SSI right. benefits removed, our Medicare, Medi Medicaid benefits reduced if you exceed. You know, you've been told that year and year and year. And, uh, and, and suddenly you, know, you hear about. Yeah. Who do, do you trust? Yeah. Do you trust that message? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was some hesitancy in people. Absolutely, can uh, Wayne anticipate to, say, to clarify that almost like they need a tax lawyer? Or, yes, or someone yeah. got yeah. it yeah. that. Too good to be true. I understand. Yeah. Well, that's a good report. Thank you. I, I would like personally being your new. I would like to see our numbers definitely enrollment numbers go up. Yes, I keep working with everyone to see how we can get a strategy to increase those numbers. It's still a new program, so it's, it is mm -hmm. up is the only way to go. Yep. Yep. Every, yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, ever since, uh, you know, the feds came out with uh, further guidance, finally saying that, you know, SSA rep payees can open an account on behalf of someone, we've really seen that momentum, not just here in Arkansas, but yeah. all across the alliance. It's uh, yeah. one month, there was 13 just from one group, and they've just been waiting on the legal check boxes to pull that trigger. And that just happened in June, right? I'd have to go back. I think and look. it was. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. I think another tailwind to uh, Chris to add on. I think one of the benefits of the alliance, uh, you know, th there's power in numbers, right? Mm -hmm. That that's the reality. So you know, um, the alliance in the past, uh, I would say, my goodness. It's March. In the past, maybe 16 months, there's been three uh, reduction in fees. Uh, so one, uh, two on the quarterly account maintenance fee because the alliance has a wide uh, hit a certain threshold of funded accounts. 
Uh, so that happened twice in the last uh, 15, 12 months or so. Uh, and then in early 2022, is it, yeah, 2022, forgive me, uh, the Alliance once again hit a break point as in terms of assets under management, then also reducing the program management fee for a census. So I think, you know, in so many ways, uh, you know, having that Alliance network, that group has benefited, you know, uh, just sure. the, the, yeah, able savers in general, because we've been able to take advantage of breakpoints or hit breakpoints, reducing the overall um, fee uh, to the account owner. Which, and Eric, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think if right now for the Arkansas plan, if you select electronic delivery, and are an Arkansas resident, you're looking at about seven dollars a quarter yeah, to have an able plan. Yeah, twenty-one dollar per. I know. You know, it's, it's a fair opportunity, but we've got to help people. Right, but but to his uh, point, I mean, yeah. because of, as an alliance, we're getting these benchmarks. It's dropping the rates for everybody. That's all. So that, right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a good deal. I'm, excuse me, Eric, the chairman, but it is. It's a fantastic opportunity. But again, I think some people just takes a little time to explain to them yeah. and understand it. Mm -hmm. understand the other. I wish my personal plan was $28 a year to run. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an excellent report. And uh, thank you so much. And well, now we have some new business. Is there any new business? Yeah, the only new business that I have is I'd like to propose we go ahead and get on the calendar our meetings for the rest of the year. Christy, um, we can, we'll follow up with an email to you and to Joe with these dates. Uh, but I think just for the sake of trying to let everybody go ahead and put them on their calendars, uh, the three dates would be June 20. These are all Tuesdays, uh, June 20th, August 29th, and November 28th, which is the week after Thanksgiving. So June 20, August 29, November 28. And I believe we have this one at two o'clock because there was a reason we, we didn't have it at one. I can't remember. New meetings, we just want to give the new administration okay. a little bit more of a buffer. So we can, when we send the email out to Joe and Christy, we'll find out if one o'clock is better or two o'clock is better. Okay. A little bit easier to plan these because it's a smaller committee than the five two nine. Did you have? We also have the National Able Alliance to Diligence Committee in April. April, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think. Correct. That's right. Two day, twenty six, twenty seven. Yes. Great. Any more new business? Okay. I want to again thank uh, Christy for joining us from home. Thank you and. Uh, Jose, thank you, and Nathan, thanks for being here, and again, uh, David, enjoy the presentation, and I, I guess uh, we'll adjourn. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Move that we adjourn. Is there a second? I second. All right. <laughs> How about your dog? Does your dog approve, too? <laughs> He's finally asleep. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we can have Such is the life, yeah. Right. All right, well, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Jose. Thank you. Our thank pleasure. You. Take care, all. Bye-bye. Nathan, y'all got a huge